In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Malcolm's Mail Script for Maya. It is a large set of very useful tools. These tools vary from small scripts for modeling to bigger ones that provide better workflows, especially when working with UVs. The developer built these tools around improving Maya's default functionalities and bringing better solutions to each aspect of the 3D program. In order to keep the video short, we're gonna be only talking about the most important ones, and I highly recommend checking them all, because you might find some of them more interesting than others. The first one we're gonna talk about is the UV Mapping Toolbox, a script that features a small window including only the necessary operations and settings that you will need to UV unwrap your models. At the top, it has all the mapping types that you can apply with one click. You can find the XYZ projection, camera mapping, automatic, best plane, etc. You can set the textual density once and it will be set for all the types of UV mapping that you could apply to your object, which helps you keep a consistent textual density across all faces. The automatic mapping of the script is an improved version of Maya's default one because it takes into consideration the scaling of the object and avoids sketch or shrunk UVs. The tool also includes the Gridify UV script along with the Mfold and Straighten operations to work along with it. Throughout the free updates, some very interesting features have been added to the toolbox including a scalable checker map, stack, orient, and group shells. In addition to UV layout, align UVs, spin and flip, gathering and ungathering shells, transferring UVs from one group of the mesh to another, etc. I can spend an entire day talking about this plugin, but we have a lot to mention in this video, so we have to move on. Next, we have the Light Mapping Toolbox, which helps you to create light map UVs in Maya to correctly build the lights of your game engine. This is the case because the way game engines such as Unreal build the light by mapping the shadow information onto the same diffuse UVs of the objects, and since it is very common to have overlapping UVs for the object's textures, it will generate errors and you will get ugly looking shadows. Using this script, you can create light map UVs with one simple click, and you can set the pattern amount and switch between the object's UV sets in the UV editor. With the same topic of UVs, the UV Grabber is a script for sending a UV snapshot for any selected object of your default image editor such as Photoshop. You can either open the toolbox window using the script icon on the shelf or load the UV sets, choose the resolution and hit the snapshot button. Or you can just right click on the script's icon and by selecting the resolution, it will automatically open up the snapshot in your image editor with transparent background and without anti-aliasing. The latest version of this script supports UDIM files, so we can set the number of U-tiles and V-tiles to be exported and then hit snapshot and it will open all the images and store them on your hard drive. The next one is about the workflow between Maya and Marmoset. As the developer pointed out in the tool presentation video, the pipeline between Maya and Marmoset tool bag, especially when it comes to normals baking, can be very boring for multiple reasons. And the Marmoset Export Toolbox script will help you just do that, saving you time and effort of manually going through all the objects groups and freezing the subdivisions of the high poly or triangulating each low poly object before exporting. Just by selecting the low poly group, hit export low and you can do the same for the high poly. Just select the group containing the high poly meshes and hit export high. In addition to that, you have access to some settings that you might want to enable before exporting such as animation, triangulate high or export high UVs. Also in the toolbox window, you can apply random material colors for each separate object in the scene or smooth object normals by setting a tolerance angle to help detect hard edges automatically. Now, if you often want to change your object's viewport material when you are modeling for example, or just working on your scene, this fantastic script got you covered. The default material toolbox allows you to quickly switch between Maya's default materials or assign your custom material. You can select your custom material in the hyper shade and hit select material and it will set it as a default material. In addition, all the objects you're gonna create will have the same material. If you want to use the same material the next time you're going to open the Maya project, you can save your custom material by hitting export button. And when you need your material to be applied, you can just import it with a simple click. 
talking about modeling, the mirror and instance toolbox will speed up your modeling process a lot, especially if mirroring and instancing objects is part of your everyday modeling workflow. The simple window will allow you to mirror your objects with one click rather than going through all the settings of Maya's default mirroring menu. You just need to position the pivot where you want to mirror and select the direction axis using the three colored buttons. You can also set the new mirrored object to be an instance of the original in case you want to edit both at the same time. And you can flip objects with one click, merge vertices by distance and more. Now, if you have ever wanted to select specific patterns in your object, whether it is in the same face, edge or vertex mode, you certainly ended up doing it manually thinking that there should be a tool for that. And no wonder why this toolbox was one of the most requested in Mount Clump's channel. As the name suggests, it allows you to select every other element in a loop from your mass geometry, making it very easy to select interesting patterns that you might need in multiple cases during the modeling process. The Create Primitive at Selection script also has a very suggestive name. It allows you to add primitive objects to the selected element, which is a time saver. With a simple left click on the script button, a low creator will be created aligned with the normal of the selected element, whereas with a right click, you can create primitive objects such as cubes, planes, spheres, or cylinders directly on the selected faces, edges, or vertices, saving you a lot of time rather than creating the object at the word origin and then trying to align it with the face or vertex or whatever. The next script is a very simple one. It cleans up your scene by deleting all the empty groups that you might find. I'm seeing the average viewer telling me right now, there is a way to do it in Maya without scripts. Just go to File, Optimize Scene Size, Remove Empty Transforms. Yes, but when the groups become ghost nodes, which happens quite often, Maya's default tool can delete them. So you have to either do it manually or use Malcolm's script to clean everything in one click. Something to note though, it might run a little bit slow in heavy scenes as it needs to go through each node in the outline. Next we have the extra hot toolbox. It allows you to enable or disable extra elements displayed on the 3D viewport, such as the current measuring units, the number of selected elements, whether it be vertices, edges, faces, or meshes. In addition to the final project you are currently working on, the time you last saved the scene, and more. And these are very useful information to have next to you depending on your needs. If there is one thing we can all agree on, it's certainly the time it takes to open and close Maya. There is a way to make Maya start faster. It is by disabling the plugins that load very slowly. But the thing is, sometimes you need to use these plugins in your projects. That's why this toolbox allows you to quickly disable some of them, I mean the slowest Maya plugins that you might not need, and enable them when you need them. But the real game changer is the closing part, because this script not only speeds up a lot the closing process of the software, but it also saves your preferences, in addition to your custom shells and the content of the script editor, which Maya's default saver doesn't do. If you are interested in these Maya plugins and scripts, you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.